I have to admit, I have a problem. It's not a normal addiction. It's to a certain type of stereo gear. It's nothing new, it's nothing digital. In fact, it's not even the highest fidelity. But it's something that when I see at a thrift store, it makes my heart wow and flutter. If the price is right, I'll always pick it up, even though I don't need it. Yes, I'm addicted to cassette decks. I could talk about cassette decks for hours. They've been a favorite recording medium of mine since the 1980s when recording music first became a hobby of mine. I've held on to many hours of recording sessions on cassette that started back in the 1980s and have lasted well into the 2000s. For part one of cassette deck confessionals, I'll talk about features found on cassette decks, including dictation style machines, an old favorite for playback of Dolby C recordings in my archive, and a Nakamichi machine. I will save topics such as belt replacement, cleaning and demagnetizing, head adjustment, three head decks, and multi-track recording for future installments. I want to start with a dictation style tape recorder. The price tag says $399 but Goodwill had blue tags half price when I bought this unit, so it cost me just $2 plus tax. This one is Optimus brand from Radio Shack. It has a similar design to the GE3-5105 that was my very first recorder. The GE is long gone, but this recorder shares many features, including the button layout, a built-in condenser microphone, two-head design, and a single capstan transport. You can play back stereo cassettes with this unit, but the audio will be output in mono as the width of the mono head gap picks up both the left and right channels from stereo cassettes. The Optimus recorder lacks manual level control, instead utilizing auto gain to maintain correct level for recording. Soft passages may become louder and loud passages will be compressed. In addition to voice recording, tape recorders of this design were also used for saving and loading computer programs on many old home computers from the late 70s into the early 1980s, including Commodore, TI, and TRS-80 computers. This Optimus tape recorder runs on four C-cell batteries or the optional 6-volt barrel-style DC input. There are three 3.5mm mini jacks on the side one 2.5 millimeter jack, and a volume control for the built-in speaker. The 3.5 millimeter jacks are for the earphone, auxiliary input for a line level source, and a microphone jack. The 2.5 millimeter jack is for remote pause, a feature on microphones such as the Gemini AS540. When plugged in, the mechanism will pause both playback and recording when the switch is changed to stop. I'm going to test this recorder with a new old stock Type 1 TDK D90 cassette tape with the date of 1985 on the shrink wrap. You are listening to this lavalier mic plugged directly into my camcorder, but now I'm switched over to the cassette deck, the microphone built into it. Hopefully you can hear a difference. To help me sync up, I'm going to snap my fingers. Now you are listening to the Gemini microphone hooked up to the Optimus tape recorder. How does this sound? Now I have a Shure SM58 hooked up to the Optimus recorder. The Shure SM58 is considered by many to be the industry standard vocal dynamic microphone. This recorder was designed for dictation but my test wouldn't be complete without seeing what it does with music. For this, I will be using the royalty-free track, Funky Element, offered by Ben Sound. First, let's listen to a few seconds of the unaltered version.
Now let's hear the same track recorded through the aux input on the Optimus, then played back into my laptop. The fidelity was clearly compromised, with the stereo track now mono and both bass and treble response reduced. So even though the Optimus can be used as a fun portable device for voice recording, it clearly is not optimized for music fidelity. Next up is the JVC TDW215. This deck lacks a microphone input, so we're not going to do any microphone checks on it. Features of this deck include full logic controls, there's auto detection of tape type so no need for a switch, it has both Dolby B and Dolby C with HX Pro. Wow and Flutter is rated at 0.08%, fairly impressive for a single capstan deck and a signal to noise ratio is rated at 73 decibels with Dolby C. I like this deck because it is a rugged workhorse. Every one of these decks I have found secondhand have worked just fine, even units that have obviously seen a lot of play hours. Also, it is fairly easy access to the azimuth adjustment with the use of a precision screwdriver. This is important for playback of tapes that were originally recorded on decks that were not properly adjusted. Let's open a new old stock Type 2 cassette, set the noise reduction to Dolby C, and record Funky Element on the JVC and see how it sounds played back. The final tape deck I'm going to feature in this video is the Nakamichi BX100. This tape deck was manufactured in the mid to late 80s and is not one of their highest end units. It has two heads, a single cap stand, and only features Dolby B noise reduction. That being said, it is the only cassette deck in my collection that I have performed a repair on. A worn idler tire prevented the Nakamichi from being able to take up tape slack during recording and playback. It also caused issues with fast forward and rewind functions. A few years back I followed the step by step directions from ES Lab to repair this problem. A link to their site is in the description. I purchased two idler arm tires with the intent of installing the second one on my Nakamichi MR1 but my MR1's idler arm was gear driven, not tire driven. All it needed was a little touch of lubricant. Let's record Funky Element on my Nakamichi BX100 and see how it performs. I noticed some flutter on that recording and I'm thinking a new belt might help things out. You may have noticed that the decks that I featured in this video all lack auto reverse. I plan to save this feature for a future video. I have also set aside decks that have obvious belt problems as I await a shipment of replacement belts. I hope you've enjoyed part one of Cassette Deck Confessionals on Thrifty AV. If so, please like and subscribe. And if you have other ideas cassette related that I should use in a future cassette deck confessional, please comment below. Also, I have recently started a Patreon account under the name Thrifty AV. Any pledge would be appreciated and help me buy more cool stuff from the thrift store. Thank you.